Uh, the first being, what is a rate of change? Uh, secondly, why does slope represent rates of change? And then we're just going to take a couple of uh, uh, look at a couple of examples about uh, estimating the slope of the tangent line. Uh, feel free to pause this video or rewind it if you need a, a, a second look at it, or a third or a fourth, whatever you, whatever you, whatever you feel the need is. All right, so here is a formal definition for a rate of change. Um, I won't ever ask you for a formal definition. I'd prefer you just know it in your own words. Um, but I feel it's kind of my duty to still give you this formal definition here. Um, a rate of change is a ratio of the change in the output value and the change in the input value of a function. So common rates of change. Um, most rates of change, by the way, are, I'll, I'll just say they are usually with respect to time. They don't have to be, but these are the most common rates of change. To give you some examples, and I'll show you in ratio or fraction form, um, in the United States, most common rate is miles per hour. In our math and science classes, we talk about meters per second. Notice these ratios are with respect to time, hours and seconds. Even something like if you have a water main break in Cleveland or something like that, we can talk about uh, how many gallons per day that break went. All of those are rates of change. Again, usually with respect to time, but not necessarily. Um, next question, why does slope represent rates of change? So maybe the best way that I can think of right now to uh, talk you through this is to just remember a long time ago when we would have to maybe graph a line. When we first learned how to graph a line, let's just say y equals 3x minus 1. What we learned a long time ago was if we make a table of values, an x and y chart, and we pick some x values. I usually teach that just a couple of negatives, 0, 1, and 2. Um, these are our input values. Okay. And we would input these x values in our equation here, for instance, if we plug in a negative 2, we get negative 7. If we plug in a negative 1, we get negative 4, and then negative 1, and then 2, and then 5. These would be our output values. Uh, these are also called, um, x can also be called the independent variable. Uh, think about what independent means. You have choice. You know, you can choose anything for x. These are independent. They ha you have choice here. And the output values are called dependent variables. Uh, there are output values. They depend on, they depend on what x was. Um, so let's take a look at our formal definition up here again and just see that it's the ratio of the output value Okay, the output value meaning our y values uh, and the change in the input value. The input value. Okay, so if we take a look at the change in output value as a ratio uh, with respect to our input value, just take a look at what we have. The output value are our y values, that's our change in y, and our input values are the x values. So why does slope represent a rate of change? Based on the definition, it's the input output values over the input, which is the change in y over the change in x. And that's what we know to be slope. OK, so that covers our uh, first two topics here. What is a rate of change? And what does slope, uh, why does slope represent rates of change?